Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. This is Mr. Williams, and I'm here to talk about John Adams and Alien and Sedition Acts. First off, uh, you might have noticed I got a haircut. Did it myself. It's all right. Uh, I don't know what to think, but it's grown on me. I get it. So anyways, back to John Adams. Uh, here's the deal. We've already talked about John Adams and the XYZ affair and the quasi war that's going to come after it. And we talked about how his popularity goes up because he builds up the army, creates a standing army. He builds up the Navy. 30 ships are built. We're willing to take this on. Uh, the big slogan is millions for defense, but not one cent for tribute. And basically what that means is we will spend all kinds of dollars to bulk up and defend our honor and be tough little America, but we're not willing to pay a single penny as tribute. And tribute is a payment to like uh, an empire that owns you, controls you, that's bigger, more powerful. So we're saying, we won't kiss anyone's butt. We'll, we'll spend millions to uh, defend ourselves, but we won't do that. We won't pay tribute to some bully. So once John Adams uh, goes through that and builds his popularity, he also then does something that is unpopular. It's probably the wise decision, but he settles for peace. He negotiates, and that leaves all the Americans who are offended by what France was doing to our shipping, leaves the Americans very disheartened and disappointed. Oh, John, we want to be tough. So we saw what happened to his popularity. And now our only problem is he's going to double down on that. And let's find out how he does that with the Alien and Sedition Acts. So like I was saying, the big thing that we associate with John Adams is the saber rattling that America loves. But then he also kind of commits political suicide. At least he starts that way uh, by settling for peace with all these things that we just talked about. When we go on, oops, excuse me. So this is what we're talking about. When we go on, what we're going to see, remember, you can pause it any time to kind of review what I've gone through here. Uh, when we go on, we're going to see that John Adams is going to double down <clears throat> and make things even worse for himself. Uh, and he does it in a very, uh, very short-sighted way. I think that's the plan. You know, you always want your leaders to be good chess masters and know what's going to happen with their actions. And be able to think three steps ahead. This one just seems very short-sighted. So he's going to double down, and the way he's going to do that is it's going to be uh, legally. He's going to work with Congress, and they're going to pass the Alien and Sedition Acts. And this is this is the big part of his political suicide, which is just going to end his career, and it's going to end the Federalist Party. Man, how can you <laughs> how can you take out yourself and your entire party? Who else could possibly do that? No connection to current events there whatsoever. So anyways, uh, when we think about John Adams, uh, he does have a little bit of baggage. Remember, he's replacing George Washington. And that's some tough shoes to fill. Uh, we talked about this, how he did the wise thing, but it wasn't a popular thing. Uh, he's a federalist. That's the political party he's a part of. Uh, federalists favor England. They want us to have strong trade with England. They they want us to model ourselves after England because England was successful. It's not a bad plan, but it's a little bit hypocritical considering, you know, the whole Revolutionary War and all that stuff. But anyways, the Federalists were also loose constructionists. They want to take a look at that Constitution and not read it by line by, by line, but they want to kind of get the main idea and work with that and see what we can do to make our system better and stronger for the federal government. So if you remember that, uh, John Adams was probably getting a lot of tweets like, what is it, at me, bro, or whatever. Like, uh, he was probably getting a lot of feedback. I know they didn't have Twitter back then. It was just emails, right? He was probably getting a lot of email, probably a lot of bad press. Okay, they did have newspapers. But there'd probably be tons of letters to the editor saying, man, that John Adams, what a stinker. And he was just kind of sick and tired of that. So uh, he's gonna pass, he and Congress are going to pass the Alien Sedition Acts. And here's some important key vocabulary that we need. Alien uh, could have probably attached that better. Alien is basically another word for immigrant at this point. It's not these kind of aliens. It's this kind, immigrants. As you can see in this political cartoon, we can see European immigrants that want to flood into the United States, and we only want so many. Uh, sound familiar? No comment. But anyways, back to this. Naturalization is the process of an immigrant becoming a citizen of their new country. There's one main thing that new immigrants probably really want to do in their new country once they become citizens. It's kind of like the, uh, the duty of every citizen or... Yeah, duty, privilege of every citizen to take part in their democracy, right? I'm sure you can think of what word that is. It starts with a V. Anyways, malicious means bad, tending to do harm. Sedition is a very key one. Obviously, that's one of the acts. 
So the Sedition Act refers to conduct or speech causing people to rebel against the authority or government. Uh, yeah, that's not good. Well, that seems like a good idea. We should definitely have laws against sedition, right? Never forget, there's a slippery slope. But who gets to consider what is sedition and what is not? So we've got to trust our authorities to make the wise choice there. Hopefully they have the right thing in mind. Uh, nullify, that's a great word, null and void. Nullify, another form of that. Nullify means to cancel something out. Invalidate and cancel something out so it doesn't take effect. Erase, reverse, abolish. If you write a check and you think twice about it and you don't want to send that check, you can you got to write null or void across it. And that way it'll cancel out that check. So null is to cancel, nullify, excuse me, cancel something. All right. So the, the main gist of the Alien Sedition Act, there's four different laws, four laws. Uh, they're passed by Federalist-dominated U.S. Congress, and they're signed into law by Federalist President John Adams. Okay, so it's a major Federalist thing here. That's kind of like today, right now in 2021, uh, the Democrats s slightly control the House. Democrats have eh, the Vice President tiebreaker in the Senate, so they kind of control both houses of Congress, and uh, the current president is a Democrat, so it'd be like a similar situation. We could imagine that this might be happening. Let's see, the Alien Sedition Act made it harder for an immigrant to become a citizen. Okay, that's a naturalization act. Okay. Uh, they allow the president to imprison and deport non-citizens who are deemed dangerous or who were from a hostile nation. This time it'd be France. Uh, remember, France and England are in a war. We're trying to trade with both. They don't like us trading with the other guy. We're supposed to have good relations with both of those countries, but they don't want us helping their enemy. So right now, we're kind of staring down the barrel of France and thinking, hey, we, we used to be buddies, but right now, it's a little shady. So watch it, France. Watch it, French immigrants. Now, here's the big key. Uh, the Sedition Act is going to criminalize making false statements that were critical of the federal government. Now, remember, uh, we have important rights. Right down here, the First Amendment says we have the freedom of speech, especially when it's directed to the government. I can criticize the government all I want, whether it's Mr. Trump, whether it's President Biden, uh, whether it's the Congress, whether anyone up there, I get to voice my opinion as an American citizen. Shoot, even if I'm just in the country as a resident, it's important to speak out about, about the government. Now, of course, you don't have the right to uh, issue death threats, bomb threats, uh, anything that would cause you know verifiable harm or anything like that. But you definitely have freedom of speech to critique and, and demand better of your government. All right, so let's get away with it. Don't forget this main key point that everyone knew, well, I'd say, there, come on, there had to be like 10% of Federalists like, yo, this is a good idea. Let's control things here. But then there's got to be the other 90% of Americans like, seriously, you guys just passed that law? Like, that's pretty clearly chicken poopy law that's going through right now. That seems shady, doesn't pass the sniff test. I would call that chicken poop. So uh, first one, Alien Act. What the Alien Act is going to do is it's going to limit uh, immigration and it's going to limit uh, the impact of immigration in our country. So why? Well, Adams and the Federalists are going to figure out that most immigrants coming in are, are uh, probably going to like the Democratic Republican Party. They're more about the little guy, uh, more about rights and not big government, stuff like that. So uh, most immigrants are probably, especially the French immigrants, are going to find the uh, Democratic Republican Party. Yeah, I'll take that one. So the Federalists want to kind of limit how much stronger that Democratic Republican Party might get from immigration. So the Federalists have point they're, they're they're not wrong about that but how they deal with it that's pretty wrong so they're going to change the rules about immigration and naturalization so what we can see here is it allows the president to deport any alien considered dangerous to the country on its surface that seems like a good idea but uh it has to be executed the right way if it's some terrorist sure get them out if it's someone that you know we're i don't know it's a slippery slope it's a slippery slope i'm sure you can imagine that Next thing, the number of years an alien had to wait to become a U.S. citizen increases from five to 14 years. That's a much longer process. That's going to be a disincentive. People aren't going to want to wait that long. Maybe it's not so rosy over there in America. They don't treat immigrants well. So anyways, it's going to help stop immigrants from coming. It's going to stop, slow down immigrants from becoming citizens. And most important, what can citizens do? Uh, my red laser pointer is kind of getting blotted out there. But what's the key thing that starts with a V? that citizens can do to change their government and have an impact on their government, vote. So right here, the Alien Act is gonna slow down how many votes are gonna be out there. Here's a cool political cartoon, I'll save that for next time. What I will say is this is John Adams, not the coolest look on him. Uh, I wouldn't wanna be compared to a porcupine or have like a snake's tongue, I'm not sure what that is, but this is Lady Liberty, she does not look happy. Liberty is not happy right now. 
leaning on you know patriotic stuff over here 1776 you know the, the core of our country but look the devil is t it looks like it's the devil's telling john adams what to do is that like a money bag oh devil how dare you and this is important for eighth graders to know the lion uh eagle is a sign of america france what's francis uh, i forget uh but england is always going to be symbolized by the lion. you can see the crown and his little uh staff right here so Oh, is that lion stepping on our flag? Oh, terrible English lion. So this is a political cartoon. It's definitely anti-Adams, but that's all I'll get into for now. As he's signing something. I wonder what he's signing. So here's the, the next key. We've talked about the Alien Act. Uh, the fourth item here that's outlined in the red box is the Sedition Act. <clears throat> the Sedition Act is going to outlaw the ability, outlaw, it's going to outlaw uh, anything that's going to be written, published, printed, said, whatever, anything that's critical of the government. Wow, that's pretty broad. That's not good. Now, again, it seems like it's legit on the surface. You shouldn't say bad thing. No, that doesn't seem legit at all. Anyway, let, let's get cracking here. Uh, let's talk about the Alien Sedition Acts, what they're designed to do. They're designed to protect the United States from bad immigrants and prevent dangerous criticism, criticism of the government. Okay, so it's during a wartime a uh, tricky situation. Yeah, you wouldn't want people giving away secrets or war plans or something like that. I, that's also, again, a slippery slope. I don't know if that's what they're really going at. I mean, I think that's what they're saying they're trying to protect. But I don't know. That's a slippery slope. Uh, here's what we really come out with. Here's what we want to know as U.S. history students and scholars. The Alien Sedition Acts are, are essentially unconstitutional, at least the Sedition Act. Uh, it violates the First Amendment, free speech, free press, uh, not so much assembly, not so much religion at all, obviously, but maybe the right to petition the government for change. That's that's in there. Definitely free speech. Fifth Amendment is also due process. I think there's some shady things in here about uh, the sentencing for the Sedition Act, but also maybe Fifth Amendment due process for immigrants. It's, it's changing the process. That's something to look into. I'm not going to take a hard stand on that, but that's something that I'd keep my eye on. The other thing about the Alien Sedition Act, it's obviously targeting one party. Uh, it's passed by the Federalists. We only have one other political party at the time. Remember, it was Hamilton. Uh, John Adams is a Federalist. But besides Hamilton, the other main archetype, uh, architect for these political parties in the early U.S. is Thomas Jefferson. And Thomas Jefferson was the head, the figurehead of which political party? It starts with a D, hyphen R, it's two words. Not just Democrats, it's Democratic Republicans. Longest name ever. It's just what they went with back then. So obviously it's targeting the Democratic Republican Party. That's not really the most American thing. And this is exactly what George Washington warned against. Don't divide yourselves first and then don't become chicken poopy just because you're divided by a name or a group. Oh, yeah, yeah. So anywho, as we go on, this is a good video. This is linked in these slides that you guys have access to. I recommend this one. Uh, you're already going to watch two others as part of your classwork. So I'm going to skip this one for now. This is here. I recommend it. Ah, famous propaganda poster. We don't want the government watching us. That's why we also have the Fourth Amendment. No unwarranted search and seizure, that type of thing. We get to have our freedoms. But anyways, here's one that's more specific. Uh, you should pause it and read this. It's kind of interesting. Makes it pretty clear what the Alien Sedition Acts did. So moving on. Again, here's propaganda posters about the Alien Sedition Acts, mostly the Sedition Act. This is very un-American. I like this symbol too. That looks like a picture of George Washington. It's tape over his mouth. He's being censored. This is a fantastic quote. I encourage you to check this one out. Uh, and then here we get the reaction. Thomas Jefferson and James Madison, they're the key Democratic Republicans. They're going to condemn the Alien Sedition Acts. And how are they going to do that? They make resolutions in states, uh, which is interesting. Virginia and Kentucky, they're neighbors. Who knows why Kentucky gets thrown in here, but Virginia are our main one here. That's where Jefferson and Madison are from. It's probably like the, the first among equals of all the states in the United States. Four out of the first five presidents came from Virginia. It's kind of a cradle of democracy there. Interesting stuff. But remember, the Alien Sedition Acts, not good. So how do we deal with them? Well, let's get through this stuff, and then let's really take a look at what the Alien Sedition Acts were going for. Um, just go through this slide. Of course, when we look back at it, they're pretty, Alien Sedition Acts are pretty clearly unconstitutional. So they violate the First Amendment and probably the Fifth Amendment. Uh, could Jefferson and Adam, sorry, Jefferson and Madison sued and had the Supreme Court overturn laws? 
the process of judicial re review wasn't completely put in place right now, but this was kind of, this is what they should have done. They should have gone through. They should have sued. They should have had some newspaper editor, somebody that gets arrested. They should have had him sue. And easy peasy, open shut case. But did Madison Jefferson do that? No. Did they go even further uh, down a rabbit hole like Alice in Wonderland? And did they lose the point and, and the match too? Yeah. They went with the Virginia and Kentucky resolutions, which basically said they don't have to follow uh, a federal law, a national government law that is uh, a bad law. They have the right to nullify those things. Those states, they don't have to do that, which, no, that, that's never going to work. You sign on the line. You sign the contract of the Constitution of the United States. So if that government passes a law, well, you got to follow it. That's what we learned from the Whiskey Rebellion. So they had the right idea. They went about it the wrong way because Article 6 of the Constitution says if there is a law that's passed by the, uh, by the federal government, well, federal government laws take precedence over state laws. Supremacy of the federal government, right there in Article 6 of the U.S. Constitution. So let's go back to the start and let's take a look. Why is that not dark font? That's supposed to, oh boy, I got to fix that. It says below this slide, there's a docs A through E for the DBQ that we're going to be doing. It's a document-based question. So we've got five documents and we want to examine the Alien Sedition X real well here. So I think this is a fantastic quote that's, uh, attributed to John Adams. And it's kind of interesting because I think he falls in this trap. By the Federalist Party passing the Alien Sedition Acts, they're kind of undermining democracy and using government power and government control to limit their opposition. That's kind of strange. Interesting, huh? All right, so moving on. Here's document A. And you know what I kind of want to do? I kind of want to go, I would never normally do this. But I kind of want to start at the bottom. I was just looking at these questions, and I kind of want to go at E first. It's a history textbook, all right? So a secondary source. Here's my document E questions down here, number 15 and number 16. Hey, that's a cool little red dot. How do the Naturalization Act, Alien Enemies Act, and Alien Friends Act affect immigration in the United States during the 1790s? Um, well, those are the three of the four Alien Sedition Acts. Those are the three Alien Acts. Fourth is the Sedition Act. So here we are. Rumors of a French invasion and enemy spies frightened many Americans. President Adams warned that foreign influence within the United States was dangerous and must be exterminated. Ooh. The Federalist majority in Congress quickly passed four laws in 1798 to make the United States more secure from alien or foreign spies and domestic traitors. Most of these laws, however, were also intended to weaken Jefferson's Democratic Republican Party. So there's our key point. Where's the balance of national security versus targeting opposition, which is not democracy. That's a totalitarian government. That's authoritarian. That's not what we want. We don't want one party control just because you have power. Not good. Slippery slope. Remember, slippery slope is like you can go from here and just whew, fall down into the bad place real fast. So anyway, back to this. The first law, the Naturalization Act, extended the time immigrants had to live in the United States to become citizens from 5 to 14 years. Since most immigrants favor the Republicans, delaying their citizenship would slow the growth of Jefferson's party. Yeah, that's going to limit uh, more new voters within four years. They, they, they won't be able to vote and maybe get rid of Adams and the Federalist Party. Interesting. Shady, but oh, whew, interesting. The Alien Enemies Act provided that once war had been declared, all male citizens of an enemy nation could be arrested, detained, and deported. Whew. It's not like that would ever happen in the United States. not like it happened in World War II with Japanese citizens on the west coast being sent to internment camps Oof. but anyway back to this if war had broken out this act could have expelled many of the estimated 25,000 french citizens then living in the united states but the country did not go to war and the law was never used the alien friends act authorized the president to deport any non-citizen suspected of plotting against the government during either wartime or peacetime Ooh. this law could have resulted in a mass expulsion of new immigrants this act was limited to two years, but no alien was ever deported on it. Okay, all right. So now our question is saying, how did the Naturalization Act, Alien Enemies Act, and Alien Friends Act affect immigration? Well, <laughs> if a country that you're looking to immigrate, immigrate to passes laws that are very critical of immigration, are you going to want to go over there? Maybe not. I think it's a disincentive. I think it's going to deter people uh, for immigrants that have already arrived. How do you think they're going to feel about these things? So I think it's, 
these three laws are definitely going to have a negative effect on incoming immigration and the the feelings and the faith in America of those new immigrants who came for probably good reasons. Number 16, which political party would have been affected by most of these laws? Well, we know the Federalists passed it, and it says right here, most of these laws, however, were also intended to weaken Jefferson's Democratic Republican Party. So that's what we really want to cite. Right there, there's our evidence right in that line. So I would want to quote that. I'd, I'd probably also want to quote, you know, the Federalist majority in Congress passed the alien sedition laws or these alien laws, uh, and they were intended to weaken Jefferson's Democratic Republican Party. There's our answer for number 16. At 15, I would just kind of pick and choose an item from each of those things and kind of summarize the whole thing together that it's going to deter immigration. So yeah, I think that's just kind of a helpful setup. Now we can go up to A, pretty simple. What freedoms are granted to American citizens to the First Amendment? And look, here's our source, First Amendment to the U.S. Constitution. So primary source, this is the text of the First Amendment. And of course, we know there's five freedoms. Uh, one thing I'm looking for in a DBQ is I, I want to see that you're really referencing the, the actual document. Uh, so these documents are at the bottom. They're on page two and three of your questions, but they're also here. So what freedoms? I would just take them in order. I don't need you to quote every single word in there. I don't need you to copy and paste the whole, is that one long sentence? Just kind of get to the point. So uh, I have an answer a sentence starter here. The freedoms are right here. Religious, I'd say uh, religious expression. And then I just say, you know, uh, so the, the freedoms are religious expression. Next is speech, press, peaceful assembly, and petition the government. It says for a redress of grievances. Petition the government means ask the government to change. Petition them to change their laws, change their stance, that type of thing. So there's our freedoms. Now, document B. Document B is broken down into three excerpts. One, excerpt one, two, three. And these questions over here... Number two and three want you to use excerpt number one. Number four wants you to use excerpt number two, so does number five. And question number six, you want to look just at excerpt number three. So there, there we go. So first thing we want to say, what is made a crime by the Sedition Act? And that's basically this whole paragraph in here. Again, I don't want you to take everything in here. I don't want you to go overboard. But it says right here, uh, it's enacted, so it's put into place, it's put into law, that if any person shall write, print, uttered or published or shall cause or procure to be written, printed, uttered. So basically, if you write or publish something or cause it to be written or published or shall knowingly and willingly assist, I don't need all that. So I can cut this down to it is a crime to write, print or publish. Now, publish what? That's where it says right here. Any false, scandalous and malicious writing against the government of the United States. So basically, I would cut that down to uh, it's a crime to write, print, or publish any, let's see, now we get three, what are those, adjectives? I'll take two of those. Any false or malicious writings against the government. That's what I would go with. Uh, you could also include, you know, against the government, Congress, or President of the United States. That might be a good answer. And that's how we just take pieces from here, take a piece from here, and take a piece from here, and put it together in one answer. Number three, what types of people in the late 1790s might be found guilty of this crime? Ooh, what type of people would be writing, printing, or publishing? Uh, probably who writes articles that would be critical of the government? Probably new newspaper publishers. Um, they didn't have Twitter back then, no social media. Are they going after letters? Probably not. Uh, probably people speaking out. But I think the main thing we're looking for is we could talk about a profession, probably newspaper publishers, newspapers, because that's freedom of the press, but also a political party. I think that's worth it to mention there. Number four, we want to get to excerpt number two. Here's, here's excerpt number two here. What does the law state can be caused by writings that defame the government? If you click on that link, defame means to uh, throw shade. I think that's what you guys say now. I'm not really sure. Uh, Man, what's a good way to explain that? Defame. Well, you guys can click on the link. That's why it's there. Quick definition. But what is the law state can be caused by writings that defame the government? Defame means damage the good reputation of someone. Well, let's check. With intent to defame, here's our word defame, the said government or their husband or the said president, or to be excited against them. So 
it's bad to excite hatred of the good people of the United States or to stir up sedi- ah here's what so if you print publish or write false and bad stuff about the government it might excite hatred of the people of the United States or stir up sedition within the United States that's what it's saying right there Number five, why would the government be afraid or worried about writings that defame the government? Well, they shouldn't be, but uh, back then it was a tricky situation where we're on the precipice of a war with France, maybe what's going to happen with England, who knows? It might complicate things. So I will let you guys explore that answer. And this is more of your subjective. This is your opinion. Why would the government be afraid about writings and, and that type of thing back then? So just remember the context. We just got out of the quasi-war. We're kind of in a perilous situation here. Do we want anyone rocking the boat? Maybe not, but is it worth it to infringe on everyone's rights? I would say no. So interesting stuff. But again, that's me wandering. Uh, Stick to the question here. Why would the government be afraid of hatred and sedition against the government? Number six. Why would the U.S. government be forced? Sorry. Why would the U.S. government be worried about foreign nations at that time in history? Oh, that's related to number two, five, excuse me, the next number two that I was just talking about. And remember, make sure you check in here, check that source for the answer. You can pause here, do that. Uh, let's go on to the next one, document C. This is a response to the Sedition Act by John Armstrong. Uh, look for the tone of this. It's to the Senate and representatives of the United States and Congress. So this is a open letter to all of Congress. And this guy, John Armstrong, 1798, he's going to have strong feelings about the Alien Sedition Act, specifically the Sedition Act. He's talking about the severest penalties. By this law, the citizens of these states are prohibited under the severest penalties. So we are prevented because there's such severe penalties from expressing our disappointment, disapprobation. That means our concern, our disappointment of any part of the conduct of the president or either House of Congress through the medium of the press. Ah, so he's talking about specifically, we can't do this through the press because if we voice any concern about the president or Congress, there is going to be a severe penalty just for expressing our opinion. What's stronger, what more precise definition of slavery can be given than this? Well, actual slavery itself, but still. That we can state no belief, that we can hazard no opinion that even has a tendency to lessen the public estimation of a public servant. So if we have any belief or an opinion that would lessen uh, other people's opinion of the government, we can't do that because there'd be severe penalties. So I think that kind of explains all through here. I think we're good on document C. Document D, this is the Kentucky, excuse me, Virginia and Kentucky resolution by Thomas Jefferson, and it's very specific. Obviously, we know Jefferson does not like the law, and what he's going to do is he's going to go about this in a very lawyerly way. Uh, you can't just feel something and win a court case. You have to have legal backup. You have to show that a law is broken, that something is, is being violated. And everything in the United States should go back to our written law, not just personal whims or personalities. So he's going to be very specific here in what he's, what he's quoting. One of the amendments of the Constitution. And he's going to get into that. So really read through this. And those ones should be pretty simple. And then once there, we're, we're back to E and we've wrapped this thing up.